turns out you're uh, uh, related to Angelina Jolie. And we found a picture that I couldn't believe. I don't know what, why we haven't seen this picture of you. Let's see Angelina, first of all. And look at you. <laughs> you know, I really admire what she's doing on behalf of, uh, you know, charity and HIV AIDS and a lot of mm -hmm. uh, work around the world. Uh, I've done some events with her and she's so it know, makes really sense committed. that y'all are related well now, this, so. this is the the odd one which i did not know you're also cousins with madonna that's true so can i see that one yes too? because i think it's amazing to see you how closely related you are <laughs> We, yeah. we have kept that picture under lock and key during uh, this yeah. campaign. <laughs> Nobody was supposed to see that picture. I had that at home. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about, uh, first of all, I, you do have such a great sense of humor. You pulled a prank on the press, uh, the media, recently. Do you want I to do. talk about that? Well, I um, went into a press conference and said that I had something very important to talk about. That there had been a lot of questions raised about this campaign and whether it would go on and how long it would last and how we would resolve it because you know neither one of us has enough delegates to get the nomination and therefore I had decided to challenge Barack to a bowl off. <laughs> I wanted him to get his campaign out of the gutter. I wanted <laughs> to count all the pins mm -hmm. and I would spot him two frames. <laughs> and the, the, you know the, the press was sitting there. Your personal admirer and friend Chris Matthews was in the front row uh-huh yeah yes and I you know I had guards Good. armed guards don't, between him and me don't dance with him no don't oh, do it well I feel like he manhandles me every night yeah. so yeah those of you who didn't see when Chris Matthews was on uh, <laughs> it's not right I couldn't believe it it's not right no well no it's not right all right so he looks like he's enjoying that way too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he was he was just laughing like after it was over. Yeah. He didn't even realize what happened. Well, uh, well that happens a lot yeah. in, in the political coverage yeah. I get. So I, I you know I did this and, and they were you know then I said April Fools and yeah. so they kind of got it. Well, uh, I'm going to bowl uh, with you. I'm not a good bowler, but when we come back, I'm going to bowl with you. But first, I want to talk about before we go to break. You have a new policy uh, for uh, breast cancer, right? Uh, and let's talk about that. Well, I know your mom's a survivor, mm -hmm. and uh, we lost my incredible mother-in-law to uh, breast cancer during Bill's first term and uh, first year in office. And I've just been really committed. I've had so many friends, and we all know people who have survived and people who haven't. And I just think we should set a goal of curing breast cancer within the next decade. We should make it absolutely... to try to figure out what causes it because we just don't know why some people are susceptible. I think it's probably a combination of your genes and your environment and your behaviors, but we don't know quite how, how all that fits together. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done enough research. And we also have to get to universal health care, which means quality, affordable health care for everyone because too many people... I've, I've been working on this for about... 15 years and I've met women who have said I found a lump in my breast but I don't have insurance and I went to the doctor and they said well we'll just watch it mm -hmm. because there was no way to pay for doing anything I've met women who were 62 and got diagnosed and are waiting to get on Medicare in order to afford the surgery I mean this is so wrong yeah and everywhere I go Ellen I meet people who postpone medical care get sicker than they should, and even die because they don't have health insurance. So I want to make sure that we get the cost of diagnosing and treating breast cancer, but every other disease, affordable for everyone. There shouldn't be a privilege to get health care. It should be a right, and I think we can do that in America. And breast cancer will be cured, I hope. I, I agree. We have to take a break, and uh, we are going to bowl together. And I got to tell you, I don't know how well I'm going to do, but I'll try. Well, you know, all we can do is try. All right, we'll be back. We'll bowl. This is one of those 
these uh, stressful situations. Uh -huh. <laughs> I go running outside, and there's Nubs, tail wagging, going crazy. Uh, he'd never been there. It's 70 been, miles away no. and finds he you. Found us. Clinton, and uh, we're going to bowl in just a second. And um, I just, I feel like if there's anything that you want to um, address about the Bosnia thing, if people have anything that they're holding on to, do you want to respond to that? Well, you know, that was about 10 years ago, obviously. And, you know, when um, uh, we were going in there, we were told that there was going to be spy sniper fire in the hills. There wasn't at the airport. And I, you know, made a mistake, although I wrote about it in my book and told everybody what had happened then. And uh, you know, I wasn't trying to mislead anybody. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to remember the best I could at a moment in time. And just recently, the man who was the president of Bosnia uh, at that time has said, you know, they, he was worried about the safety conditions uh, of the situation. But, you know, for me, it's about what we do now and how we go forward. I'm proud that I've represented our country in more than 80 countries, including war zones. And I think that international experience puts me in a good place to be able to be the president. Because we have a lot of damage we're going to have to undo mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to inherit next January. So uh, I feel really ready and prepared to be the commander in chief and uh, take on all of the responsibilities and to be the, you know, the president that leads our country back on the right track. All right, we're going to go bowl. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I, I bet there are some good bowlers in this audience. I bet there are. Oh. We need some help. We no, need some help. No, don't cheat. <laughs> no, you're, you're probably really good, though, because there was a bowling alley in the White House, right? I know, but I'm, I have not bowled since I left the White House. Well, clearly, you were going to stop near the pens. It's over here. Look at this. <laughs> don't, no, no, no. Oh, we've got to be way back yeah, here? Yeah, you got to be way back here. Oh, um, okay, now you got to go first, because it's your show. Uh, no, no, I'm, a, I'm the host, so you're the guest. You should go first. <laughs> oh, no, after you, yeah. Alice. After you. <laughs> All right. I really don't know how to bowl. You can do it. You can do it. We're all pulling for it. All you. right. Uh, I think you kind of. <laughs> all well, you know, this is one of those uh, stressful situations. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Made you look good. Yeah. Thank you. That's why I like you. Because. <laughs> Uh, again, making me look good. I think you're fantastic, and I, I just, I just, just keep going, and uh, and people should decide. I think it's it's wrong for anyone to tell somebody, whoever you're for, everyone has a right to to vote for whoever, but to tell someone to get out is it's our vote. It's we are the people That's that should choose who our president. Right. Is.